guys, it's Sisha here and welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new. So in today's video, I am doing the long-awaited GFX tutorial. You guys have been asking for this for quite a long time now, but I have not found a way to do it and I don't even know if I'll be able to do it right now. But if you see this, that means it worked. Basically, what I mean by this is I make my GFX on my Mac because for some reason my Windows computer does not work with Blender, it always crashes. And I make my videos on my Windows computer now and my Mac has absolutely no storage so I have to like be speedy with this. Anyways, before we begin, I was thinking about doing a how I make my thumbnails tutorial so if you guys would like that, let me know in the comments. Second, everything that you need will be in the description and it's all free and you do not have to pay for anything. And finally, my mouse clicks will be on so you should be able to see what I'm doing. Left click should have this pink outline and right click should have this like bluish outline. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here we are on my desktop and the first thing that we will be doing is going into Roblox Studio. Roblox Studio should come free with Roblox on your computer. If it does not, I will have a link down below for you to get it. Once you are in Roblox Studio and you are logged into your account, you should be able to see this. It's under the category New. Go ahead and click on the base plate. Now that we are in Roblox Studio, the commands are W, A, S, and D. Same as Roblox. Also, the arrow keys work. And to move your camera angle, you right click. So first things first, go to the top where it says Plugins and you need to get this Load Character plugin. If you do not already have it, all you need to do is go here where it says Models plugins and then it should be one of the first ones there because it's super popular it's by already pro if you don't see it just search load character there will be two here one of them is the normal load character and the other one is the pro i recommend just getting the normal one because the pro honestly is no different once you have it it should be right here so just select this and get rid of it and type in the username you want I'll just use myself. And make sure that there's an X in the spawn at origin. And then click spawn R6. Then you can just get rid of that. So now you should be able to see your character here. If you want to make any changes, go ahead and do that now, such as adding a different face, which I have a tutorial for by the way, or adding different clothes, different hairs, anything you want. Now we're going to get our model. So if you have saved any already, they will be in your inventory right here. If not, I recommend looking up Fairy Jewels models because she has amazing ones. To do so, just go to these three little lines with circles on them and then search Fairy Jewel. This is her username and then you can hit apply and all of her models will pop up. Now you can just choose whatever one you want. I'm just going to use this little soft playroom because it's super cute and tiny. You can move that wherever you want. I recommend moving it next to your avatar. Now what you want to do is right click on your model export selection and save it as whatever you want wherever you want it might take a second to save depending on how big your model is once you have your model exported you can delete it now you want to do the same for your avatar now we are all finished with roblox studio and you should also see all of these textures on your page obviously they will be different since we probably don't have the same models but you should see textures if you do not see textures you probably did something wrong or did not save them on the desktop. Now we are going to open up Blender. Again, link in the description if you do not have it already. Mine is pink, but when you get it, it should be, I think, black. Just like really dark colors. So they are the exact same, mine is just a different color. So when you come into Blender, you will see this little screen here. Just go ahead and click anywhere so it goes away. And then there will be a cube. Just click delete and then X, and then you can delete it. So first of all, we're gonna go over commands. So to move, you want to hold shift and then press F, and now you can move. So you just move your mouse around to move your camera angle. And then again, W, A, S, D to move. And Q and E to go up and down. Once you are finished moving, just left click and you will stay still. Now that we know the commands, the first thing you need to do is go up here to the top where it says Blender Render and click it and go to Cycles Render. Now we're going to go over here to File, Open, and now you're going to need the Woman Rig or whatever rig you want. I will have a link to the Woman Rig, Man Rig, and Block Rig down below. 
So basically what you want to do is you will see the folder with the rig, click it, click rig, and then click default.blend. You probably would not have all of these, but I have them for when I want to do a GFX with multiple people. Once you have that selected, go ahead and click open blender file. Now that you have this gray looking creepy character, go up to its face and now you want to right click to select things. To select multiple things, you want to hold shift and right click. You want to delete the head, the eyes, as well as the teeth and the tongue. Once you have deleted everything, it should look like this. So you want to go ahead and right click so that the arm is selected or any body part. Just make sure that the rig is not selected. Now go over here to this little cube, click node editor, and then up here, you should see this little folder right here. Go ahead and click that. Now go to wherever you put your avatar and find your username. Click that and click open image. Now click on this little thing and go back to the 3D view, aka the cube. And now you should have the body and the clothes that you're wearing. Now to get your head, you want to go file, import, wavefront obj, desktop, and then whatever you named yourself and mine, I named it me. So there will be a .mtl and .obj. You want to always click .obj and then import it. As you can see, there are two hands, two legs. It just looks weird. So what you wanna do is just select the arms and legs, delete those, as well as the torso. And now it should just be your original body and your head, but your head will be backwards. So what you want to do is select your head and all of your accessories such as hair, glasses, hats, anything like that. Once it is all selected, go over here to tools and then click join. Now over here, it says rotation XYZ. On Z, click that and press 180 and then hit enter. And now your head should be perfectly on. Now if you want, you can go ahead and position your character. For me, I'm going to have her sitting. To move your rig, you want to right click on them so that way they turn a bit more colorful. So see how this is kind of like a maroonish color and then you right click and it turns a bright red. And that's how you know that it is selected. Now, if you have these little arrows like this, you're just going to move it back and forth, which we don't want. What you want to do is go down here to this little curve tool and now you should be able to move it like this. By the way, to undo any of your actions, do Command Z or Control Z, depending on what computer you're on. So now I will show you the rigs that we have. So this rig here moves the entire arm. This rig here moves basically the elbow and down. This yellow star looking rig moves the wrist. And these little rectangle looking ones on the hand move the fingers. Now for the legs. This double square looking one moves the entire leg. This square one around the ankle moves the, the knee, basically. This star one here moves the ankle. Now for the rest. This green star here moves the legs completely. So if you want to do a sitting pose, I recommend using this. So that way you can just move them both forward and they will be equal. And then to move the head, just right click on your head and move it however you want. So now you can go ahead and position it however you want. Alrighty, once you have it positioned, we are now going to import our model. To do this, you want to go to File, Import, Wavefront OBJ, and find your model name. Again, use .obj and not .mtl, and then import. Again, this might take a while depending on how big your model is. Now that your model is in here, you probably won't be able to move it because it's all different parts and it's just really annoying. So what you want to do is move your avatar to the model. To do this, what you want to do is select one of the rig pieces and then click A twice. So now everything should be selected. And then shift right click on your head. So now it should be, I think, orange for you guys, but for me it's pink. And now you just want to make sure that you're on the arrows, aka this one right here, 
and move it back. P.S. If you have any questions about anything, let me know in the comments and I would try to get back to you as soon as possible. Now you can position this wherever you want. Make sure that it's on the ground and not levitating. Once you have it positioned where you want it, if you want to add any props to it, just select them and move them where you want. Now, as we can see down here at this little circle, if we click that and go up to rendered, it's super dark and you cannot see like anything and it just looks really gross. To fix this, what you want to do is go to this globe here and click Ambition Occlusion on. So if you want to make it a PNG, here's what you need to do. You need to make sure that you are on this camera, scroll down, Right here it says FFMPEG video. Click on that and click PNG. Now go over here and select RGBA. Scroll down a little bit and click transparent. And now if you click rendered, in the back it should be transparent. Now if you want to add a background, I recommend going to the website called HDRI Haven. Once you come on here, it will look like this. What you want to do is just select one of these. I recommend Sunrise and Sunset. They just look the best. And just click on any one that you want. So say I wanted this one right here. So just click on it. Scroll down, click 4K, and then you should be able to download it. Once you have it downloaded, what you want to do is go back to the square, click it, and go back to Node Editor. Now down here, click on the globe. And then over here click the plus and now this should appear what you want to do is hold shift and then press a and this will pop up go to texture environment texture and then you should get this place it on the left side and connect this yellow circle to this yellow circle i'm just going to move that so i can see it now we're going to go right here to open and then you want to find your hdri click it and then click open image now go back to your cube now when you click render, as you can see, it has a background now. For me, I personally like to add an extra lighting though, so what you want to do for that is go to down here where it says add, but make sure that you are selected on a limb and not a rig because the add will not be there. Now you want to go up to lamp and then hemi. You might have to look for it, mine's over here. And now as you can see, the hemi is pointing downwards. So what we want to do is go back to this curving tool and curve it so that way it's pointing sideways. And now just move it close to your avatar. The farther away you move it, the more power it needs to be. So I like to move mine about this far away, maybe even a little closer. And I like to have it pointing right at the face. Now to adjust it, go over here to the Hemi. Click color and color whatever you want. I recommend a like peachy tone that looks like this. And then strength. For me, I like to put it at two because it's pretty close to the avatar. Now if we go in front of the avatar and click rendered, it looks super bright and super peachy. Really colorful and so pretty. If you want to adjust it, you can. I think I'm gonna make mine at 2.8 for this GFX. Now what you wanna do is go to add, camera, and then view camera and you should be able to see your camera if you want to adjust the camera size go to the camera button and then resolution and change the size if you make it an exact number against itself so such as 1000 and 1000 it will be a square for me i'm using this as a thumbnail so i'm just going to use the rectangle size but if you're making a GFX, I recommend 4000 by 4000. It will take a little bit of time to render, but I highly recommend it. For me, at the 4000 by 4000 render, it usually takes about 7 hours, which is a while, but it's totally worth it. These ones right here at the rectangle usually take about 40 minutes. Now what you want to do is go to this little picture looking thing and scroll down a little bit at the very bottom, click denoising. This basically makes it super smooth. And as you can see, I have like this little plant inside of my body. So we're just going to go ahead and delete that real quick. Alrighty, so now if there's any last minute things that you want to do, 
just go ahead and do it. And if you want to, you can go view in your camera and then click rendered and see exactly what it's going to look like. Obviously, you cannot get quite a clear picture because of all these little dots, but just try your best to imagine what it would look like. All right, I really like mine. So now what we're gonna do is go over here, click render and then render image. And now you can just sit here and wait for it to render. Up here, you can actually see how long it's taking. So when you see GFX artists put the time, this is usually what they mean. And then right here, you can see how much remaining time you have left. For me, I have about 54 minutes. All right, I will be right back when it's finished. Alrighty guys, it is about 30 minutes later and my GFX is finished rendering. As you can see, the denoising really helps because the GFX looks super, super smooth. Alrighty, so to save your GFX, here's what you're going to want to do. Go down here to image and then click save as image. It has F3 right next to it. Click that. Click on your desktop and then click a folder you want to save it in. Or if you just want it to go on your desktop, go right here where it says untitled.png and rename it. Now you're going to want to go over here and click save as image. And now we are finished with Blender. You can just go and close out of it. And now here it is right here on your desktop. And yeah, that is pretty much it. That is how I make my GFX on Blender 2.79. Again, if you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. You can also message me on Instagram or Twitter. If this helped you in any way, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, click the notification bell so you never miss when I upload. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye my shells!